That's the love of her. And she don't write pretty. She don't write pretty. Because she write life. Because she write life. She don't write pretty. She don't write pretty. Because she write life. Alright, so seeing as how the theme is sage, let's talk about what that means. Sage is a verb, but why do we do it? Any volunteers? Why do we sage? Well, it's a, it's a what? Right? It's a cleansing. It's a tradition as old as my ancestors, old as the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, and it works. I can smell the sage in the room. I feel so empowered. I feel amazing. But you know what? Poetry is very much like sage because it confronts you intellectually, it confronts you emotionally, and it makes you go through what's called the dark night of the soul. Has anybody ever been there? It's, it's some real shit. It gets real when you go into the dark night of the soul because you have to confront yourself for what you've done and who you are, where you are. Not everybody wants to do that. They want to hide in, in relationships. That's people's favorite hiding place. Drinking too much, having sex too much, and become hoarders. I know y'all seen that show, Hoarders. They start hoarding. No, it's real. They start hoarding shit to not deal with what they need to deal with. So I'm going to share some of my cleansing poetry with y'all. I have no shame about it because it's how I got to be where I am today. The first poem is a warning to take care of your daughters. I call this piece Too Soon. What's the name of my poem, y'all? Too Soon. All right, and it goes like this. She placed breadcrumb fantasies at my feet, lured me far and away from mother's protective reach, Showed me the way to forbidden paths and through perverse streets. Unknowing of the dumb luck and blind shield that guarded me. From imminent harms that young girls who think they grown don't conceive. Like the hooded he and she sold these. Who lust to sink teeth into young fresh meat. Wandering in unfamiliar territory. Y'all listening? Yeah. yeah. Indeed a dangerous walk for legs yet to reach the full height. But when you broke in home bread, with a stubborn head, you refuse to heed the warnings of love's foresight. Mm -hmm. Confronted by a door unlike any I'd ever seen before, when opened it led to eerie and floorless corridors, I was like Neil in the Matrix, given a choice to return to familiar habits or to follow the white rabbit. Yeah. A threshold run over revealed another world, memories of playing jacks and dressing in mother's pearls faded away and were replaced by the sinful mistakes of adult girls. Y'all listening? Yes. Lured me to her attic where she performed wicked magic that caused funny sensations below my stomach. She ignored my expressions of delight and fright and whispered things like, what you scared for? You're supposed to be grown, right? While stroking me pimpishly to soothe away the confusion that intruded me, she spread open my quivering knees to drink the river that was flooding from me. She sucked Hershey kisses from places mama warned to keep secret. I spilled tears from an explosion of premature convulsions, only feeling, not comprehending, the unknown depths from which I was descending. Innocence violently vibrated out of me in waves of heat, sweat dripping so profusely, it blinded my underdeveloped third eye from seeing the truth of this depravity. As the night's moon shined on the walls, our silhouettes danced a dance of sinful crime, forever changed in two hours' time. In the morning light, my body's reflection projected one unrecognizable as mine. Curves were refined, the roundness of my breasts were plump and divine. No longer 15, turned out like 29, doing grown woman things, but with a child's mind. Y'all mm. listening? Sorry, I'm getting emotional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. You got this. It's a true story. This is real. An innocence died from succumbing to ecstasy too easily. Now memories of a former child are kept alive only in her mother's memory. A word from the wives to keep your daughters close to home. Reiterate that they are royalty whose ancestors adorned primitive thrones. Mm. Open the books of the ancient Egyptians to teach the powerful proof from whom they are beautiful descendants. Instill in them confidence of conscience so that it can never be undone. Teach them that their beauty isn't meant to attract perversion no matter who they hear that shit from. And don't be afraid to reinforce their 9 or 10 o'clock curfews for it is to prevent them from doing some things in 
in life, they'll learn you simply cannot undo. Y'all listening? Come on. Tell them you love them, for it helps to add value to their self-worth. Make them know that it is God and then she who should come first. And heed these words is not ridicule, but a warning from a girl devilishly swooned. And if you do this, rest assured that they shall never grow up too soon. Thank you. Right.